Welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today our guest is Natalie Allport. Natalie is a former Canadian national team snowboarder, an entrepreneur, a multi-sport athlete, and the host of a podcast called All In with Natalie Allport, where she interviews other professional athletes. She's passionate about inspiring other motivated young people to go all in on their dreams. Natalie, we are so excited to have you on the show today. Let me hand you the virtual microphone and the stage is <laughs> yours. You. Awesome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to uh, chat with you guys and share a little bit more about my story. Um, like you mentioned, I was a former national team athlete. I'm an entrepreneur and I host my own podcast and do a lot of interviews with different pro athletes, coaches and leaders and in the uh, different worlds and their different spaces and their different expertise. Um, but how I came to this all was kind of growing up as being that girl who was super passionate about things. Um, my parents actually told me they put me in sports because they wanted a place to contain my energy. Uh, I asked my dad, why did you put me into sports? And I thought he would have this really profound answer. He said, yeah, it's about sportsmanship and all these things, but it was also because you had a lot of energy and we wanted you to put it to something productive. So I was always very passionate about a lot of different things and I was given the opportunity to explore those things. And so I think that's very important to explore the different things that you're passionate about and not be worried about being judged about switching what you're passionate about or sharing that passion with your friends, with your family, with your teachers, um, and really actually inspiring other people through the passion that you have. Growing up, uh, I, I was interested in both sports and in business. And so I was always having this little hustle. I would have the lemonade stand and I would go around on my scooter with a sign and yell at my neighbors to buy lemonade. I would try to sell things to my neighbors. I had little grass cutting businesses. I would sell gum. Um, my family, when I was about 10 years old, we started an agility ladder business selling fitness equipment to different sports teams in the area or who are traveling to the area. So we did a lot of things like that. And um, something that always resonated with me was sometimes there were people in school in my class who would judge me for that passion that I had. And now that I realize, now that I've gotten older, it's interesting to look back and, and kind of take that judgment in perspective and realize that it's actually made me who I am today, being able to ignore that and realize that it comes from a place of other people not maybe feeling that they can be as passionate as you. Um, I think everyone has their own unique passions and things that make them different, but they worry about sharing that with other people, including their classmates. So I think that if you are really passionate about something, actually sharing that can inspire your classmate or your friend or your family member to do the same thing in their life. And then they actually end up judging you less and you end up being a less judgmental person in return. So I think it's very important because a lot of people uh, try to say that it's cool not to care and to look like everything is nonchalant. But I really think that to be really successful in life, it is cool to care. It is cool to be passionate and effort is cool because I promise you, these are the things that will take you places. So when I was in my school years, I was getting made fun of because I was not very good at snowboarding when I started. I was actually completely horrible at snowboarding when I started. I was a good athlete in other sports, but that sport came very slowly to me comparatively. And uh, so I, I went all in on snowboarding and I actually told my class through a project we were doing, we were writing about our dreams and our goals. And I said, I'm going to be a professional snowboarder. And everyone laughed at me and they laughed in my face and they talked behind my back and they said these things. But that that really pushed me and it pushed me to go harder and to make it happen. And then, you know, here I am uh, all these years later, having done that and having been on the national team for many years and many of these people who I went to school with and said these things coming back and asking, hey, when can we go snowboarding? When can we do this? So I, I think that if you want to be successful in the long term, don't be afraid to be different to uh, celebrate effort and to be passionate and share that passion with other people. Yeah. Uh, I, what I love most about your story, Natalie, is that it started at a young age for you, but as you've gotten older, you've been able to make adjustments and pivot into areas that have continued to interest you. So let's talk a little bit uh, about what you're doing now. So you've been a professional snowboarder, but you do a lot with in business now with branding and have your own agency. You have your own podcast. Um, where did those things kind of start and, and how did you grow into what you're doing now? Yeah, so throughout my years of snowboarding, you know, I, I didn't come from, my family wasn't um, wealthy 
and uh, we weren't struggling by any means, but we weren't wealthy either. And uh, my parents invested a lot of time and energy into sports. They sacrificed anything that they wanted to do to make sure that we could um, pursue our different sports and our different passions. But the, they always had the mentality that we had to earn anything that we wanted. And so, um, you know, we didn't really get an allowance. We had to buy anything we wanted. My snowboards that I wanted to buy, I had to, to purchase. So I wasn't able to get my own snowboard until I personally um, saved up the money from whether it was running the lemonade stands or selling different things to be able to buy my first snowboard. So that was something that they really ingrained from, from a young age to work hard for the things that you want to do. And I'm very valuable for that because they always, they rewarded effort more than results. If things came naturally, they're like, that's great. But what, what is it that you're working really hard towards? It's like, if I get a B in a class that I'm working really hard on, they're much happier than A plus in the class that just comes easy. So that was something that, that, you know, I kind of ingrained in myself and, and through that I had to make ends meet. I had to figure out a way to pay for my snowboarding and pay for my athletic career, pay for my coaching, the travel, all these things. Um, so I had to figure out how do I get sponsors as well as how do I create some sort of business that is fun and I can do at the same time as snowboarding. So uh, I was able to learn how to use social media to market myself, to post content and different things, to be able to get sponsorships, get these brand deals and, and uh, help them uh, pay for my equipment and my snowboarding and things like that. And then as well as I started a few different businesses at the start of my snowboarding uh, career, I started one business, which was strength and conditioning for ski and snowboard athletes and teams. And then uh, eventually one of my sponsors Sponsors actually ask, can you do this social media stuff the way that you're doing it for yourself and with your sponsors for us as a business? So I was like, yeah, that, that sounds great. So that kind of launched my marketing agency, which is what I do today. Uh, I did pursue my business degree in university through online university while I was uh, during, uh, in my athletic career, which is a lot to balance. They actually, the national team doesn't necessarily want you to be managing all those things at one time, but it was an agreement I made with my family, which ended up paying off well for my later transition. But thinking about those things and actually, you know, be, I kept being different even when I was an athlete. While all my athletes were you know, focusing on different things and maybe partying or different things. I was focused on, you know, I need to maximize my success while I'm here as well as set myself up for success when it's over because especially in action sports, but in all sports, sports end, they have a shelf life and it's not going to be forever. Uh, unless you're the very, very best and you sign a billion dollar lifetime contract. So that ends when your sports career is over, you got to figure out some other thing to do. And, and even if you do just want to retire, I'm sure it's much more fun to, to do something else after. So yeah, so that's how my marketing agency started. Started. My podcast started because I wanted to share interesting conversations I was having with other athletes and colleagues and high performers and the tips that, that you know, we have in our high performance conversations. How can that help other people and make some cool content out of it? So that's how that all kind of snowballed. Right. I, so I love when you were talking about um, some of the expenses that you had growing up, whether it be coaching or equipment, it, it reminded me. So I grew up in northern Utah and my little brother is a snowboarder. Um, snowboarding wasn't even really a thing when I was a kid, I'm too old. <laughs> and so, but for him, he's, he's 10 years younger than me and he got into snowboarding and, uh, just like you, he couldn't afford all the fancy stuff with the coaches. He didn't have sponsors early on. I think he got a few later, but, um, for him, the cool thing was there were things he could control. And so he built a half pipe in our backyard, like this huge nine foot half pipe. So he could practice on the skateboard. Uh, during the summer months and then he would snowboard during the winter. Um, we have awesome mountains here in Utah. And so, you know, it was seen that he took that initiative to do those things. Now you mentioned, you know, you cut lawns, you had a lemonade stand. Um, did you continue doing those things as you got older, like into high school or, or what did you do to make ends meet once you were now competing at a higher level? Oh, yeah. Well, I got in trouble in high school because I was selling uh, gum <laughs> in the school. Yeah. But that's everyone always laughs when I tell them that story because I was, yeah, that definitely continued into high school. I was always doing different things. My actual, my first like real job was an umpire for baseball. And then I was a referee in hockey. So I like wanted to continue the sports connection. Then I was an instructor for snowboarding. So I had like a lot of odd jobs. And then, yeah, but I also got traditional jobs. I actually worked really hard to graduate high school semester early so that I could work for that semester to pay for all my snowboarding and stuff to, that I knew my career was about to get started. And uh, I worked like 5 a.m. till 12, making breakfast sandwiches at a gas station. I One summer during my snowboarding, I worked as a janitor for the whole summer. So, you know, you make things things work when you, you have a goal and that, that you want to make happen. You, you take the 
the jobs, however dirty or basic they are, you, you take them and they teach you a lot of different life lessons. So yeah, I definitely continued. And I love that story about your brother making the half pipe because I did the same. My grandpa <laughs> welded a rail for me and we put it in the backyard. Um, we were always making these rails that my dad would say fall apart because we were using the wrong nails, the wrong screws, but he would let us just like, okay, you make that. And uh, yeah, they break or something when we land on them, but we would set them up in the backyard or um, we lived in a townhome. So I would try to use the steps, but they would get so ruined. My parents probably had to replace them before we sold that house. And, and we didn't really have much of a backyard, but luckily ours wasn't fenced in. So we could kind of, you know, utilize some of the neighbors. Right. And then there ended up being a common area that we could use. That was part of like everyone who owned the townhouses there. And we used that hill. Some neighbors didn't like it, but to, to practice our snowboarding. Because yeah, here in Ottawa, we don't have big mountains. And so... Um, that actually ended up being an advantage when I traveled to big competitions and the weather wasn't perfect. The people who came from those places with the perfect jumps, the perfect conditions couldn't adapt versus me in my backyard when it's icy and there's no good mountains around, you know, you can adapt to those, those less than ideal situations. Right. That's cool. Well, and, and I think that leads into this next one really well, that you've been good at adapting, you know, where early on you were doing these odd jobs as a kid. Um, as you got older, you took this new thing, social media, and got really good at it. So you developed a skill first, and that's a skill a lot of people want. I hate social media. <laughs> and so to be able to hire that out, have somebody do that, that's a very marketable skill. How did you develop that in the first place? Was it just dabbling around with your own stuff, or were you intentionally trying to develop that as a skill so that you could do it for others? Right. So I would say from the start, it was just dabbling around. I think the really cool thing about my background was that both my parents studied marketing and um, had been involved in entrepreneurship and my dad was an entrepreneur. So, you know, we would have a lot of high level conversations since I was a young kid about business, about right. entrepreneurship, about marketing. And a big lesson we learned when I was 10 and making the agility ladders is, hey, dad, like we made all these ladders, but no one's picking up the phone and calling us. It's like, well, did you put a poster out? Like, oh, <laughs> no. And I do wish wish that you know the younger generation have it even better for those like I was like imagine if social media was around in those days I could be mm -hmm. creating content posts me using the ladders you know the teams using the ladders like there's so many more things I would have done back then there wasn't social media and I was having to put the poster with the tag off phone number at the arenas and the sports fields but uh, nowadays it's even easier for uh, you know the next generation gen z and and younger to come up and use those tools that they have and just use it for their own projects because they don't even need to experiment on a client or a different thing. Use it on your own projects and that'll build the skill into you can start doing it for other people and start learning all these things. So yeah, that's kind of how it, it came up. It was kind of organic and then just knowing my marketing background, knowing I was going to business school, I started taking more of a strategic approach to it, which has been my big differentiator of actually, you know, understanding the traditional marketing because marketing and advertising, the platforms have changed, but a lot, and the content has definitely changed. Those are the things that the next generation knows a lot about and that younger people have been able to keep a really good pulse on. Um, but when it comes to marketing and advertising in, in a general sense, it's the same, it's psychology. And so if you can get that understanding, which a lot of people who only just focus on social media and don't focus on learning the background of marketing and all those things might not understand, then it's going to be hard to actually create sustainable results that go across for businesses and not just, you know, for yourself. Right. So a couple of things from that. Um, first is, I, I love that you talk a little about your, about your parents and their background in marketing, because I think one thing, a lot of kids don't have that background. I know for me growing up, my parents never talked about money. They never talked about business. They never talked about any of those things. And so it was really hard. But if, if you kids listening to this fall under that camp, it's not too late for you, one, but two, you can do it different when your parents. And I know uh, as a parent myself, I talk to, I mean, for bedtime stories with my kids, we read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, and, and we're, we're talking about different things we can do. And my son does a lawn mowing business this summer. My daughter's selling ice cream door to door on her <laughs> bicycle cart. And they're, you know, the same things that apply to you, Natalie, my kids are doing, they're hanging up posters and they're going down door to door. And a lot of those traditional things, you're right, where the technology has changed a lot, especially at a young age, you're, you're not using technology. It's about hustle and work ethic, right? And so if you're willing to put in the work, you're going to make some money. I, I love my 14-year-old who is, you know, he's mowing lawns, but he's also helping people with weeding. He's also, 
he built a bookshelf that he's selling and he saved over a thousand dollars this summer for his first car so he's still two years from driving but he wants to own a, a ford mustang so he's saving <laughs> up for it now and i mean kudos to him for for that work ethic and and so i think that's important now the second thing as we talk about social media you talk about how platforms are continually changing and that's certainly true so that's kind of like our world it's continually changing we don't know what the future looks like so for kids who are looking forward and thinking well what skills should i develop and not waste my time i don't want to learn TikTok if TikTok's not going to be around in two years you know right. so what would your advice be to them as they're looking forward to this changing world as far as what kind of skills they should be developing and thinking about? I think the most important thing is to learn how, learn people, learn people, relationships, uh, how you can build relationships, learning, yeah, interpersonal relationship skills, um, as well as how to communicate and then the psychology behind decision making and things like that. If you want to go even deeper and more sciencey, mm -hmm. I think that's the key. Like when it comes down to being successful in just getting a job or making your own business or whatever, you have to be able to build relationships. Um, that's just so important. And I think it's going to become increasingly important as the world actually goes more to technology. Relationships will be even more important because the people who can build those relationships will become invaluable versus the people who could easily be replaced by technology because they're not able to communicate or have something that's not replaceable by these this tech. So I think that's really important. I do think like, you know, using things like TikTok and things like that, if you can use that as a tool to learn the psychology of how people are consuming content and different things, even if there's a new platform, you'll just learn some of those skills um, of how to actually like, create different content and all these things because I think that that is not going to go away. Um, there's going to be, you know, some sort of other platform that takes over or different things that are always going to be some sort of, you know, content that's quick and easy to consume that people are going to enjoy. Maybe it's holograms in the future, but then you got to be able to communicate via holograms. So uh, just using some of those tools while they're here, even if they're going to go away is important, but I think definitely just de diving a little bit deeper into how you can build relationships. And that just comes from maybe reaching out to people that you're scared to reach out to. Um, Cause that's a good skill. Knocking on the doors. That's scary. I used to hate talking on the phone, hated it. I, I would refuse. My mom is like, she, the phone would ring and she wouldn't pick it up. She said, it's for you to pick up. I'm like, this is your friend. And she's like, no, 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 no. You have to pick it up to learn. I'm like, no, please. I would be crying. I just didn't want to talk to anybody, but I'm grateful for that because then, you know, when I have a client, I need to call. It's not as much as of a anxious worry as it would have been when I was a child. Yeah. So I, I love that you've developed these skills and I think you're right on moving forward. It's learning people and learning the psychology of people. You know, I wish that required curriculum for schools was marketing, psychology, business, just basic business, financial literacy. There's a lot of things that almost all adults use, but we don't teach it in schools, but you can develop that on your own. You can watch YouTube videos, you can listen to podcasts. And, and so I think that gives you a, a certain leg up in life if you do that. Now, one of the things that you mentioned I love because your message here is that effort is cool and, and certainly you epitomize that as you, if kids will go to your website or, or look at your Instagram, you'll see that you're very intentional with your branding. Things are done on purpose. Um, and when it comes to effort, I think one thing that holds a lot of kids back is they say, well, I don't want to do this because it's going to be dated in a few years or the technology will improve or whatever. What would be your advice to them as far as maybe starting a YouTube channel or, or a podcast or, or getting into a new social platform? Um, is it okay to make mistakes in those areas or would you say hold off and just get good at one thing or, or you know, what, what are your thoughts in that area? Yeah, I would say just go for it because if you say that, okay, there's going to be a new platform in two years, you'll be saying that for the rest of your life. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think things are, they're always changing rapidly and things are always shifting. And so you just got to, you know, learn how to do things and say you're, you maybe you're late on on TikTok or you're late on Instagram and you start just creating it from now and you worry because there's already so many people that blew up in, in your niche or in your space or whatever it is and that you can't break in. Going through that is going to help you for when that next platform comes out. And it might still, like, I don't think anything is really too late. I think there's still a lot of opportunity anywhere if you're unique and authentic about it and intentional. Um, so I think 
one, just like capitalize no matter what. Don't, don't make any excuses on why you should wait or different things, but also just know that no matter what, if you do something and you view it as a failure because now there's a new app or something else or you didn't blow up, you learn so many skills by going through the process and you will not learn those same skills if you don't actually do the work and try it. Like you can read about something, you can watch something on YouTube, but actually going through and doing it and creating will always be valuable. It's always going to be a huge lesson. It's, it's just so important to learn those, those things and those skills. And so I think just, you know, go for it, give it a try. Even if you fail or if things change, that is okay. It's going to make you better for next time and more ready. Cool. Now I want to, for this last question, I kind of want to transition a little bit over just because something that you're really good at is branding. And this is something that when I was a kid, no one ever talked about branding, having a personal brand that didn't even exist. There was no such thing as a personal brand. <laughs> but I think for kids moving forward, this is something that we have to be aware of. I mean, you want to be first to market as far as getting a domain name or a social media handle or something like that. And, and so we really have to think about personal branding moving forward. Um, so with that in mind, what are a couple tips that you might give to kids as far as thinking about how they represent themselves online and develop a personal brand? Yeah, for sure. One thing is like, I always knew I wanted to be an athlete and my dad, like he's, he's not an expert by any means on social media or personal branding. I'm always ranting to him about these things and, uh, and all those things. But he did know, he was like, you know, as an athlete, when you grow older and if you get more popular, like people are going to take words out of context, they're going to do these clips. And so it was always important for him to ingrain into me about like, being intentional with what you're saying with your message and different things, just like preparing me for if I had future media interviews, if I had future things like that. And so I kind of took that into mind when it came to social media and different things, not to say I got it right at all. I think my first ever post was like my friend playing guitar, like nothing professional as much as I say that I was, you know, I used it intentionally from the start. It still was just like, Oh, this is a new social media platform. Let's just post my friends. Right. So, yeah, so I, I wouldn't say that I necessarily used it in, in different ways from the start. So just to give everyone some context so that they don't feel like, oh my gosh, I've only been posting for friends and family. Like, it's not too late. Don't worry. You can still adapt and change. Um, I've been consulting a lot of young athletes on this um, who might be going to play college sports or pro sports, and most of their posts are just for friends and family right now. But um, it's important uh, because now with sponsorships, with um, getting jobs with entrepreneurship, anything like that, people are going to your social media. Um, and so it's not just only for an athlete or for an entrepreneur. Like it's also for that job hunter who wants to brand themselves as an expert at what they do and be a, a tool for their business. Like perhaps in the future, more businesses will be using their employees to get their messages out and will want to see you active on social, have a platform because that's a, something that your business could utilize and you might be a bigger team player and role player than someone who hasn't had these things built out or uses it just privately for friends and family. So I think it, it comes back to just like being intentional about these things, thinking through like what your message is. And it doesn't mean forcing anything. Like I think people think about the word personal brand and they think, oh, like I need to make myself as if I'm a business and um, not post anything that I like. But that's not what it means at all. It's just actually just thinking about what also would provide value to the people that you're that are following you like what why are people following you are they following you just to like your photos of with your friends and family like you know then if so you can send them to the, those photos on you know by private message or whatever it is but um and, and there's nothing wrong with posting some of those photos time to time of course but i think it also comes down to just thinking about the psychology of the people who are going to be interpreting your content and how you could provide value and make an impact help people like uh, when i post something i try to think about okay like this is either like something I feel strongly about and a message I really want to put out or you know maybe there's different purposes behind the different things but um it's like will this actually be worth talking about or be worth sharing or is it literally something I could just send to my one friend is the only person that needs to see this or my my family or, or my mom my dad whatever it is so it's just being intentional about those types of things it doesn't have to be overly professional to start you don't have to have like these highly produced videos and any means it's just thinking a little bit deeper behind why you're using social media and is it to is it just to look good in front of your friends and family or is it to get you ahead in whatever you want to achieve in your life yeah that really good point and i i really like that you mentioned that you can be personal uh in a professional setting you know i've i've seen that myself 
uh, on my speaking YouTube channel, you know, where I book gigs and things, my most popular video is me singing with my kids. You know, <laughs> it's a, a much more personal video, but that's what people want to watch. And, and likewise on LinkedIn, which is where I connect with people like you, my most viewed posts are, are me talking about my weight loss because not a lot of people lose a hundred pounds. And so that's what went viral, you know? And so those things can, can help build your brand. But again, you want to think through it. Well, is it appropriate for this platform at this time? And those things can build on each other. But I, I think that's really good advice. Well, I, I love your message, Natalie. I love this whole idea that effort is cool because it, it certainly is. And even if you get teased a little when you're younger, um, it serves you well in the long term. And so I, I think you're a great example of that. Appreciate you coming on today and sharing that message with the kids. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.